So today we are going to learn about the Korean War, also known as the Forgotten War. We have three daily objectives. Number one, explain why the USA engaged in the Korean War. Two, describe the strategy used by General MacArthur to push the North Koreans out of South Korea. And three, list the outcomes of the Korean War. So prior to World War II, Korea was an absolute monarchy. So it had a king or queen that made all of the rules. Fortunately for Korea, it was one of the very first places conquered by Japan at the beginning of World War II. What most people do not realize is that World War II technically started before the Nazis invaded Poland. It started with Japanese aggression in Asia. So Korea was one of the very first places conquered by Japan. You look over here on the map on the right, you see Japan, the island. Korea is a peninsula very close to Japan. Japan has invaded Korea many times throughout both of their history. Japanese are very, very harsh to the Koreans. Uh, they consider them as inferiors. And they really go into Korea because they want raw materials, especially coal. North Korea especially is filled with lots and lots of coal. Japan wants the coal to fuel its factories. Korea is industrialized by Japan in order to strengthen the Japanese economy. So if we're, we're going to start mining coal in North Korea, we might as well, in Northern Korea, we might as well start building our factories there too to produce our weapons of war. It's exactly what the Japanese do. Now the southern part of Korea is going to be freed by the United States of America during World War II. The northern half is going to be freed by the Soviet Union. Again, you look at the map, you can see between Korea and the Soviet Union is Manchuria. Manchuria was also conquered by Japan, so the Soviet Union is going to move its troops down and free the northern half of Korea. The United States of America is coming this way and is going to free the southern half of Korea. Now, the Soviet Union, of course, being a communist country, is going to establish a communist government in the northern half of Korea. The United States of America, being a democratic country, is going to establish a democratic government in the southern half of Korea. And that is how what was one country becomes two. The two countries, North Korea and South Korea, are divided at the 38th line of latitude, often called the 38th parallel. So by 1949, both the United States of America and the Soviet Union had withdrawn most of their soldiers from the Korean Peninsula. But both countries have established North Korea and South Korea, respectively, as client states. North Korea does what the Soviet Union says. South Korea does what the United States of America says. In exchange, the Soviet Union is going to be supplying North Korea with guns, tanks, airplanes, money, all kinds of wonderful things. The United States is going to be doing the exact same thing from uh, for South Korea. North Korea's ultimate goal, just like South Korea's ultimate goal, is to reunite the peninsula under one Korea. And on June 25th, 1950, North Korea attempts to do just that. They cross the 38th parallel and invade South Korea in a surprise attack. Now... Soviet Union and North Korea did not believe the United States would go to war over a little tiny part of a peninsula a world away. They were wrong. The United States of America calls the Soviet Union's bluff. And the reason they do that is because of this thing we learned about in, yes, in a few days ago uh, when we talked about the Cold War, the USA strategy of containment. Remember, containment is the idea the United States of America needs to stop communism wherever it shows up. Because with domino theory, once it shows up in one place, it'll show up in the next place, and the next place, and the next place. So the USA, according to its foreign policy strategies and goals, had to stop communism. So they are going to engage in the Korean War to stop communism as a result of containment and domino theory. Political cartoon on the right perfectly illustrates this. It's your choice. Where do you draw the line against communist aggression? And the United States decided to draw that line at Korea. One little gray part, not the red part. So South Korea formally appeals to the United Nations to intervene. Remember, the United Nations is an international organization created after World War II to solve the world's political problems. If you remember the United Nations, 
one of the big one of the big distinctions between the United Nations and the League of Nations, the United Nations, the United Nations is ran by the Security Council. The Security Council is all of the most of the world's most important countries, including the United States. And it's those countries that get to decide the decisions for the entire world. Now, as luck would have it, the Soviet Union did not show up to the Security Council meeting where South Korea appeals to the United Nations to intervene. That is a mistake for the Soviet Union. The Security Council, under the leadership of the United States of America, agrees to send an international force to save South Korea from North Korea. Fifteen different countries commit troops to the war. All are under the command of U.S. General Douglas MacArthur. Now, we look over here on the right, we can see the battle strategy the United States of America undertook to save South Korea. So by the time the United States finally showed up in South Korea, September 5th, 1950, by the time they showed up here, North Korea has almost entirely conquered South Korea. So if we look at the light orange versus the dark orange, the light orange is North Korea, the dark orange is South Korea. See this dotted line right here? This was all that was left of South Korea by the time the United States of America and the UN force uh, de uh, declares war and shows up in South Korea. So the UN force does two things. One, it lands an invasion force in Incheon, right here, very close to the 38th parallel. It's also going to land troops in Busan. Busan is the new capital of South Korea that's barely holding on. From January 1951 to July 1953, they are executing, MacArthur is executing a pincer strategy. So we've got soldiers moving down, down, and we've got soldiers moving up from Pusan, and they're capturing the North Korean troops in the middle. Hundreds of thousands of North Korean soldiers surrender as a result of this pincer strategy. Uh, MacArthur pushes soldiers all the way to the 38th parallel, back to where the border between the two countries are, and they have to make a decision. Do we continue? Do we try to conquer North Korea and make it democratic as a part of South Korea? Or do we leave it alone? They decide to do the first one. Let's reunite Korea. Let's make it one democratic country. The so UN troops pursue North Korean troops past the 38th parallel all the way to the Yalu River, the border between North Korea and China. So let's go back and look at our slide. This is the Yalu River right here. As we can see, it's the border between North Korea and China. This is going to scare China. Remember, China is a communist country, just like North Korea. On October 1950, China, a communist country, afraid of the 300,000 strong UN force led by the United States, is going to declare war on this UN force. They send soldiers across the river and they start pushing the UN forces back. So millions and millions of Chinese soldiers are going to fight UN forces back across the 38th parallel. And for the next three years, the Chinese advance and eventually capture Seoul, the new capital of South Korea. We see a couple great political cartoons on the right. These are Chinese political cartoons, propaganda cartoon. The top, we see a depiction of uh, General Douglas MacArthur. This is not what he really looked like. This is the Chinese depiction. You can see him killing North Korean babies. We've got U.S. bomber planes dropping bombs on civilian centers. Remember, we did this in World War II as well with devastating effect. And finally, we see Chinese soldiers, guy on the left, and North Korean soldier, guy on the right, using, interestingly enough, American-made Thompson submachine guns, pushing uh, American soldiers back to South Korea. This is the 38th parallel right here. We see an American Jeep and an American tank uh, destroyed, left in ruins. We see General MacArthur turning tail and running away with his American flag. July 1953, UN forces in North Korea sign a ceasefire agreement. This is not a peace treaty. This is a ceasefire agreement. They both agree to stop killing each other. By the terms of the ceasefire agreement, North Korea and South Korea would remain two separate countries. Their border would remain at the 38th parallel. Some 4 million people die in the Korean War, and nothing happens. There is no great political change. There is no great economic change. North Korea remains communist. South Korea remains democratic. Neither side really gained much territory. Four million people died for nothing. 
Uh, to today, 2016, Korea remains divided. The North is communist, the South is democratic, along the 38th parallel. North Korea remains one of the few communist countries rule on Earth. Uh, unlike most communist countries where you had an authoritarian dictator, which kind of changes from one dictator to the next, North Korea is actually ruled, has been ruled by one family for its entire existence as one country, and that is the Kim family. So it is a com, it is technically a communist dictatorship, but it is also it is also a dynasty, which is kind of interesting. Over here on the right is Kim Jong Un. He is the latest Kim ruler. Uh, he is the third in the line. Take about five minutes. Answer your daily objectives.